I bought this Onan 3 EK 12 lead generator for uh, about 600 bucks at a local auction. It's an intermediate sized generator for my eventual wood gas electricity for the residence project. It's a city water unit, so it has no radiator. Since it's a city water unit and it has a uh, water-cooled exhaust manifold, that means that I can heat the house with the generator on the day or days that I run it, so that's really beneficial to me. Once I got the generator home and started to check it out and fix a few things like broken spark plugs and uh, a couple of spark plug wires are missing and so on, uh, I discovered that it had a severely cracked block along the intake exhaust manifold side, uh, cracked almost all the way from the front to the back. And it had a popped out core plug in the, uh, uh, I guess it'd be the rear end of the cylinder head. I checked prices for a long block, uh, and the long block is 1395 bucks. so add 600 to that, and I'm still at about two grand, maybe 2500 if I wanted to take that approach. But I've decided to try to seal the block up first. So I thought I'd try to run the thing and see if it works at all. It's really nice and clean inside. And by the way, it came with an automatic transfer switch for that same price. A little minor uh, a cleaning up of the wiring. And uh, I, it's a propane machine. And so I've hooked it up on propane. And it runs really, really well. It's nice and clean. And it makes power. So I've decided to try to seal the block. This will be a four-step process. First, remove, uh, replace the core plug in the cylinder head with a neoprene expansion plug, which I did. Second, flush the system uh, uh, well so that the internal block sealing stuff that I'm going to use uh, has the best chance of working. Second, seal the block on the inside with this block sealing compound and then uh, seal the outside with JB Weld as a kind of a double protection method. I'll make this uh, overall process into three short videos. The first one, which will follow this introduction, will be the flushing video. The second video will be the video of sealing the inside. And the third video will be the video of sealing the outside. With no further ado, we'll move on to flushing the block in preparation for uh, the internal sealing. I'm going to pour this water out. It's not very dirty, but I want to keep things as clean as I can because the whole idea is to flush this out so that the uh, flush so that the uh, uh, radiator repair stuff will have the best possible opportunity to work. So here goes the flushing stuff. It says it's, I don't know, calcium citrate or something like that. This stand pipe is just something that I added. So that I can add some water into the system. takes a little while to get it to run through everywhere here. What I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be filling this gallon. I guess this is the equivalent of my radiator. And then I'm filling it with the mixture and then pouring it back in here. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth as the engine heats up. I'm probably going to cheat a little bit. It said run the engine up to normal and 10 minutes. So I may go a little bit short on the 10 minutes for a couple of reasons. Uh, okay, water's running out. And what that means is that we've run in to the exhaust manifold and uh, we're filling that. It also probably tells me the exhaust manifold isn't getting totally emptied out either. Or that we have some kind of an airlock 
somewhere along here. Uh, I've run the engine several times on ether. I ran it probably for four or five minutes on the propane yesterday. And uh, neither time did I get it hot enough to, to operate the thermostat, I'm sure. I'll be checking the temperature with my handy little uh, non-contact Harbor Freight temperature measuring device. The block is at 68. The exhaust manifold is at 63. The cylinder head is at 72. And away we go. Okay, so now uh, I've obviously shut the engine down about three or four minutes ago, and uh, I'm just recirculating my dirtier and dirtier flushing water through the system. Things didn't go quite as I planned, but I think I got control of the head temperature after I realized that that lower uh, uh, yeah, bottle needs to be higher up. Well, it's five minutes after four, and I'm now draining the system. A um, lot of running around real quick here. Uh, when I was doing the flushing, I was taking a couple of gallons as they would come out of the lower radiator hose port, pouring it back into the uh, engine, into my standpipe you know, to keep the flushing stuff in there. Well, it hit me about halfway through that I was just continually pouring this hotter and hotter water in there and there was no place for the heat to go. So I got up to about 203 degrees at the maximum point here during this whole thing. And, uh, uh, and then I shut it down. Uh, uh, and then left that coolant in there for a while. The, the, the learning is that before I do the uh, installation of the goop the K and W permanent metallic block sealer and head gasket repair that I'm gonna have to come up with a heat exchanger and at least something like a five gallon bucket or a 30 gallon garbage can to uh, 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 to, to, to put cool water in because even if I need to have this only running at an idle for five or ten minutes, the amount of heat generated is just, it's got to be dealt with. Uh, so I have to go looking for something. Copper, of course, is extremely expensive these days, so 
I think copper's kind of out. Um, also, I need to be able to make sure that the, that the liquid is circulating in there too. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure how to do that just yet either. Uh, maybe a piece of clear tubing will help. I, I'm not sure, I just don't know, but I'm gonna have to deal with that. There appears to be a thermostat mounted in the head. Um, and uh, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly how on city water the cylinder head is supposed to get full. It, of course, the, material, the water is pushed in from the bottom, so it should fill all the way up, but unless there's a little hole in the, in the thermostat, uh, you know, it could be that no water gets there until the thermostat still starts to open. I don't know. Seems to be okay though this time, because I checked the temperatures between the uh, cylinder head and the block and they're very close to the same. So uh, I'm assuming that water's flowing through that. But anyway, I've got to come up with a heat exchanger and some way to make darn sure that that hotter and hotter water is circulating. And I can't have a whole lot of, um, of uh, a volume in my, in my uh, heat exchanger because this can has only got so much stuff in it. So I'll have to go away and think about that. I got on my rinse cycle when I reheated the engine and kept pouring cooling water through it, I did uh, uh, keep the cylinder head temperature down to 153 degrees and then that heated up 20 degrees when I stopped. So uh, at any rate, uh, that's better than it was the first time.